Good morning. Welcome to Black Hat uh, 2015 Day 2. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements before we start. Um, if you can stop by the business hall in Shoreline A, there are sponsored sessions in theatres A and B. Uh, be sure to check out the Black Hat Arsenal in Breakers D, E, J, K. And sponsor workshops are in Mandalay J, K and L. Uh, you are here... Oh, I have got the wrong room. You are in the Jasmine Ballroom uh, for the session, The Applications of Deep Learning on Traffic Identification. If that's not where you intend to be, now is your chance to get to where you intend to be. Um, if you could put your phone on vibrate, it would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Lee Brotherson. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Wang Zhanyi. I come from China, and this is my first time to the Black Hat, and also the first time to USA. Uh, I'm glad to stand here. Today, I'll talk about the applications of deep learning on traffic identification. Uh, first of all, please let me introduce myself. I'm a signal and information processing PhD. For several years, uh, I have worked for the largest telecom operator of the world, CMCC. Now, I'm a data mining researcher at Chihu 360, which is the largest internet security company in, the, in China. I have accumulated a rich experience of machine learning, and I devote myself to, the, to solve the problem of uh, cybersecurity by machine learning and data mining. Also, I have three nice colleagues. Our team focused on data-driven security. Now we study on uh, the statistical analysis, and, uh, deep learning, pattern recognition, and anomaly detection. Okay, let's begin. Uh, the contents of my talk are as follows. First, our researchers packed some tradi traditional methods of traffic identification, then explain neural network and deep learning briefly. Next, I'll introduce some typical applications of our achievement, uh, such as protocol classification, uh, unknown protocol identification, automatic future learning, and application identification. At last, I will give you the conclusions and the future work. As we know, traffic identification is the foundation of cybersecurity. An accurate mapping of traffic to protocols or applications is important for network management, uh, anomaly detection, and so on. We all know some traditional methods. The earliest one is based on special or predefined Ports, such as standard uh, HTTP port is 80. The default port of SSL is 443. However, if a port is irregular or has never appeared, it doesn't work at all. Another method is based on signatures, features, symbols, or character. Uh, that's the same thing. Uh, cyber security experts find uh, static, dynamic, and distinguishable features. But it's very time consuming and labor intensive. Also, the signatures will be invalid when protocols are new or not standard. Recently, some people try to find automatic ways to identify traffic. They want to leave the work of generating rules and decisions to the computer. This procedure usually includes three parts. First, collect useful features as many as possible. It always needs to compute uh, statistical values or associated scores, such as the time interval between packets, uh, packet sets, repeating patterns, and so on. Second, choose a, choose a valid machine learning model. The most uh, popular model is decision tree. That is because decision tree can get through the work of cl uh, classification as well as generate explicit rules for identifying. Then the last, the model outputs predict 
results. In the whole process, the difficulty is how to choose appropriate features. It always depends on the experience of uh, cyber or security experts. So we consider, is there any ways needed experts experience? Can we learn features in some unsupervised ways? Then we think of deep learning in artificial intelligence. Many people have known the power of deep learning in the field of pattern recognition. I'll take an example in image uh, recognition. Features should be defined and uh, extract, extract by human. The feature ext extraction is very complicated. Now, once the researchers use deep learning technology, the features can be learned by machine very easy. For original feature pixel to deep layer feature edge or borders, then to the eyes, nose, at last, some faces are learned automatically. The voice features in speech and the semantic features in natural language processing are also successfully achieved by deep learning. It looks amazing, right? If we use it on traffic identification, so what? I will briefly introduce deep learning related to our work because it it refers to many aspects and explain why it can be used in our topic. Okay. And neural networks are the basic of deep learning. It's a hierarchical structure. The basic unit is neuron. neuron. There are at least three parts in the structure. At the bottom is the input layer, which represents the input data. Hidden layers uh, in the middle. Output layer is the prediction. Each pair of neighboring layers is connected. We call the weight of connection parameter W. The so-called training is getting a set of optimal W. Neurons in the same layer are not connected. That's the characteristic uh, of the neural network. Autoencoder is a specific type of neural network. It also has hierarchical structure. The difference is only one hidden layer. Most interesting, the output layer is identical with the input layer. You can consider that the function is to restore the input information as much as possible. The hidden layer is compressed information that is feature. Now I show a visualized example. Here is a classic, classic, class, classic ex experiment. Please look at the picture on the left. This picture includes 100 small images. Each image is a hundred. Uh, each image is a hundred and digit, zero to nine. We can train them by autoencoder until reduced to a certain error cost. The results are shown as the red picture. They look like the edges of the number. You, maybe you, you can't see what uh, it really is, but it's the feature. That's the features for identifying digits. People didn't predefine which shape is useful. They are learned by the co computer. If we start several autoencoder mo model up, it's, it will be stacked autoencoder. The hidden layer of the former autoencoder is taken as the input of the later one. The output layers of each autoencoder are wiped off after stacked autoencoder is generated. Stacked autoencoder is a ne narrow network, essentially. But the training models are a little different, such as graded layer-wise training and fine-tuning. We won't spend time on mathematical derivation. Just know the structure and the process. That's enough. Okay, we talk about enough background. 
When we use it for traffic identification, there is the relationship. Back to the digit number uh, example, an image is composed of pixels. That's a number six, we can see that. We consider the grid image for convenience. The scale of the pixel value is from zero to 255. Our payload uh, in the right, our payload of NetFlow is a sequence of hexadecimal numbers. After, transform it, after transformed uh, to decimal strings, you'll find that the range is the same. Of course, they represent 256 characters. Taken in this sense, our payload is very similar to the image, yes. So it is, it is reasonable to use deep learnings. Okay, our implementation includes two stages. One is training stage, the other is identifying stage. We collect TCP flow data in our intranet and associate the data of the same flow from multi-packets. For training data, sampling is necessary because of the uh, large volume. After transformation, we build a deep learning mo model. It can be deep neural network, stacked autoencoder, and so on. Finally, give a prediction of testing data by the model. I'll explain every step later on. At first, we use CPU clusters of several servers. For raising the training speed, we use AMD high performance graph, uh, graphic cards. The whole training time is reduced to less than three hours. The identification can be done in real time. That's very quickly. Um, there are several reasons that we must use parallel computing based on multi GPUs. We have a large amount of data, and there are more than 5 million parameters. It will take several days just to buy one machine. As the sketch map show, data are in, divided and, and, and put onto multi machines at first. Each machine has several computing nodes. A parameter server is at the top for gathering and uh, distributing parameters. The parameter is that uh, I just top the parameter W. Anyway, we solve the problem by multi-machines, GPUs, and the OpenCL framework. Okay. Let's get into details of identification. We put the upload and download, alternate, uh, download data alter, alternately together. It transforms to a long sequence. Then we convert this long hexadecimal sequence to decimal vectors. Pieces of data are sent to the input layer. The model is trained by data with labels and the test data is no labels. We can see the outputs are several floating numbers at the top, yes. What do they mean? And how can they predict? In general, you can suppose that the numbers are probabilities of protocol. If the number is zero to nine, it's, in, it's big enough, so it highly likely belongs to a certain protocol. There are two ways to predict. If logistic regression is concerned, we can check the maximum one as the prediction. Also, we can set a threshold such as 0 0.5. Also, you can set 0 0.9. This is very strict. Check the results greater than the threshold as the labels. In this case, maybe more than one protocols are labeled to one payload. The other is softmax regression. Its advantage is that the sum of the values always equals one. Usually, 
we choose the label which has maximum value as the prediction. Here are the evaluations for our results. Because HTTP is easy to identify in traditional way, so uh, we don't take it into account. The table lists the precision on top 20 popular protocols. All of them are greater than zero to nine. Please see, see the table. There are four protocols at the top, SMB, DCE, RPC, NetVoice, and TDS has a precision of 100%. If we don't care the ratio of every protocol, the overall precision, precision exceeds 99%. In this metric, our method is as good as the ways of pause signatures of machine learning on popular, machine, uh, on popular protocols. Besides known protocol classification, our method can identify unknown protocols. In traditional ways, some records are labeled by unknown. It means that these records are not fit for predefined rules, so they can't be identified immediately. We randomly choose 10,000 from this category our method can still distinguish more than 60% of them. The number and the ratio of protocols that are picked out are in this table. That's another highlight of our, our achievement. As we talk about, besides protocol identification, automatic, automatic feature learning is also possible. By an algorithm, we get the degree of importance for every original feature. That's a formula I don't want to get in deep into this detail. So let's see the automatic learning result directly. Figure A and B list the distribution of top 25 and top 100 important features. It is obviously that the payload data in the front are very important for identification. From figure B, we can see most valuable features concentrate to the head of the distribution. Uh, there's another feature, figure, uh, figure C. Figure C shows the distribution of the most uh, use, useless features. By contrast, this kind of features lay on the tail of the payload bytes. In the past, we need experts to decide which feature is useful and how does it really work. Now the problem has been solved by deep learning. These results testify that machine can take the place of people in some special tasks. Moreover, deep learning model also performs very well on identifying applications. We record the process names and the TCP flow data. We use this data as a training data and also train a deep learning model. The model uh, can be a static autoencoder or neural network or others. After many times of optimization, we can predict a application accurately. There are more than 800 applications in our training data, and we identify unlabeled data. The, perf the performance is very significant. Please see the table. The table lists some common applications in my country and these precisions. Maybe there are some different ones from here, but some of them are popular everywhere or in the world, such as uh, Foxmail. Uh, Foxmail, the precision is 100%. Uh, uh, and uh, Xtrail, 
iTunes, Outlook, IE, and so on. Maybe IE is a little uh, low, but uh, uh, most of them are over uh, 0 0.9. The overall precision is 90, 96.3%. Okay, finally, I'll summarize the work. We introduced uh, the pr uh, applications of deep learning on traffic identif identification from four aspects vertical classification, unknown practical identification, automatic feature learning, and application recognition. Our contribution lies in two aspects. One is that we reduce the workload of the experts, people no longer need to extract uh, features by themselves. The other is that we solve the problem of parallel computing on big data. The next step in our work includes applying CNN model. CNN is conventional neural network to improve the precision of identifying applications and analysis of uh, encrypt traffic by deep learning. Okay, that's all. If you are interested in the content, please offer feedback by electronic evaluation in your email. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? The sample data? How big was the sample size? How many images? Our data is uh, 100 million per day. 100 million per day. And, uh, mm, sorry? Uh, yes, it's very, very, la very large. And we uh, take uh, maybe, you, you can, you can uh, take one day or a week data to train a model. How large? Um, that's, uh, that's in my slides there are description. Uh, this one. Hundreds of millions original data per day. Classify what? How did you collect the data and classify the data? So okay. Uh, we collect uh, in our internet. Our company have uh, 7,000 7, uh, employees and we uh, choose some volunteers to help us uh, to get the data. How did you classify the data? Classify what? Uh, our, I mean, unsupervised is the, uh, in our method is the feature, feature is unsupervised. And the uh, classification, of course, that's supervised. Yes. Yes, we need labels of the protocol or uh, application. Yes. How many features? Yes, uh, that's an empirical parameter. Maybe uh, we test uh, on several tru uh, children, uh, maybe several hundreds or one thousand. Uh, that's according to the uh, to the data. Maybe different data. Uh, you you will choose the different parameter. Okay. Uh, in our neural network, that's, uh, that's a formal experiment, so it's not very high, it's about uh, five, five layers, and the autoencoder is about uh, five to seven layers. And you mentioned there are five million parameters. Was that, was that 
Uh, pardon? I mean, for the model, you mentioned there are more than five million fractures, right? The model? Yeah. The, uh, this one? That, that's uh, just uh, that's just uh, uh, in example, not not uh, the real real structure. Okay. Uh, so another question would be: with the model implementing your your environment, uh, how many memories would you use? Uh, we have enough servers. Enough servers. Okay. Yes. Our results uh, is. Large enough, yes, in our company. Pardon me. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.